Hello everyone. Oh, it seems like an age since I was last year and I haven't had a chance to craft for well over a week now because I've just, I was away the last weekend and it's just been a bonkers week in work. So um, this is the first time I'm, I'm able to get on my craft desk. So I'm just going to dive straight in and see what we can uh, do to this uh, journal signature. So here I've got a bit of a mixed media page, um, almost finished. Uh, I think it might need just a little bit to, to brighten that up, either maybe a quote or some stickles or something. But what I wanted to show you was uh, what this page looked like before, um, which is, let's have a look, it looked like this. And what I want to do, I know I could just quite easily cover it, but what I'd like to do is do exactly the same here. Um, recreate it here to cover the stars which really don't go with the uh, kit style and also the um, the grey. I'd like to push the grey back and then what I'd like to do is have half the, half of this. This is from the um, Sounds of Summer kit by Rachel Bella Crafts. So what I want to do is cut that in half and just have half on that side and half on this side. So I'll have a nice, um, well just, just a, a a nice little bit of simple mixed media. So I'm just going to quickly grab my gesso and show you uh, what I did um, on this page. Bear with me a second. So I'm using this gesso, which is um, Studio Acrylics. And bear with me, I think I'm just going to redo the camera a little bit here. Just give me a little bit more room. There we go. Um, so it's, it's quite cheap uh, gesso from Amazon. You need um, any type of brush, but preferably dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to get rid of all the hard edges. And it takes a few layers and a little bit of patience. And a heat tool is handy in this instance so that you can get on with it. But what you want to do is just go around the edges and slowly work the shapes out. In hindsight, this probably wasn't the best paper for me to put in this journal because it really doesn't go but I wanted to use this because um, I remember creating it and it was right back in the very beginning when I started to find out about junk journals and I was messing around with whatever paint I could find and ink and shapes. I was just having fun messing around. And so I really don't want to lose that. But at the same time, I don't want this to look odd either. So there's a little bit of work involved. But that's why we do this crafting, isn't it? So I'll carry on now and I'll probably speed up the camera so you don't get too bored. Had a lovely blob of paint there, so just wiped it off quickly, but I really not not too bothered about that. So I'm now going to go in with a second layer and get rid of any of the really thick parts. I think we need one more layer there. Okay, so let's push the colours back nicely and I can still see the stars, but I'm happy that I can 
just only see them a little bit and it still reminds me of the time that I, that I made this page and that uh, those memories won't be forgotten. Um, if I look at the uh, image that I want to put in here, you can see there's lots of blues and reds and teals, and there's also some gray there. So I'm glad that the gray has stayed. Um, it's pushed into the background, but it still stayed on the page. So I think it'll go quite nicely. And what I'm thinking about now is whether I want to do my splatters um, I'd like to use some watercolour on here, but I th think I'll do that once I've stuck this in. So I'm going to bravely uh, rip this in half. Oop. And I'm going to do a little bit of distressing. On this page, I did quite a bit of colour um, just to enhance the blue from there. Um, on this one, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, th I probably will need it, actually. Um, so before I stick this on, I'm just going to get some colour in there. And the way I'm going to do that is use these watercolour paints. They're curated yeah curate take i think they're called i'll put a link in the description box for these so you can have a look i bought them on amazon they are awesome paints but use what you've got you could use acrylic for this um i just want to use this because um it's what i got to hand so i'm gonna have a look now and see which colors i want to bring out and i really would like to bring out the sort of um the teals i think That'll be the easiest match. And um, what you also need for this is like a spray bottle. So I've got this one here. It's a distress sprayer. Ranger. I haven't got much water in there, actually. I'm sure I've got enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a paintbrush. Dip it in the colour that I'm thinking will go and I'm just going to lightly put some on the corner there quite concentrated now this does take a little bit of time to get the desired effect but once you've done it it's, it's a lot of fun so I'd encourage you to to do it you also need a little bit of um, tissue paper so I'm going to use kitchen roll use some kitchen roll and you can dab the excess because I don't really want much um, I don't even want, don't want drips not in this thing I like drips but I don't want it in this so I'm going to keep on adding this in and go around the page and do some drying in between.
Okay, I'm just going to bring in just another colour, just to slightly darken it to see if I can match it with the picture. So I've just tried, I'm just going to do it on the edges here. Yeah. So I've just mixed it with a darker blue. It's got a bit more grey in it. Best thing to do is just experiment with the colours until you get it right. You can put layer upon layer. You don't have to get it right the first time. When you do mixed media work, especially uh, when it's a lot of wet work, be aware, of course, that it will uh, weaken your paper. So you can see here I've got a slight tear going on there. So I'm going to fix that once this is all dry. It's also gone through the other side. I really like that. But obviously, if you don't like that, then you need to be aware of that. But I'm quite happy with that colour now. So I'm going to leave it completely dry before I stick on uh, my windows. So I'll just turn it around, make sure I don't do this upside down. No, 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 no. It's right like that. That's right. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to leave that like that now. And as soon as it's fully dry, I'll come back and then we'll finish the page off. I'm really happy with how this has turned out so far. And um, I did leave it last night, overnight actually, to dry to make sure that I could um, come back this morning and, and fix this rip. So you can see there, I've just got a little bit of a rip. Uh, the bottom's looking okay, um, as I said, with um, mixed media, you do tend to uh, weaken the structure of the paper, so be prepared to make some compromises with that and fix them as and when necessary. What I'd like to do to fix it, uh, you could very easily add some washi tape there and add it on the other side and because i haven't sewn this in too much um i could quite easily do that but what i'd like to do in the spirit of using what i had on my table and junk i what i'm thinking of doing is actually using some packaging paper and wrapping it round that part of the signature and having that like that or maybe just a little bit over so it goes into the pocket and on the other side then I've got that piece there and I may do something with that then like collage and add some more elements of the kit so that's what I'm going to do first before I finish off this Usually what I would do to glue this down is use something like an uhu stick and some um, some kind of PVA based glue, art glitter glue, that type of thing. But um, I have been thinking about the uhu stick. I mean, I love this product and it's so quick and easy and convenient to carry around. But you've you've got all this packaging and it, and it has started to bother me because I. I was going through about three or four of these a month. Um, so I've purchased some of this. Um, Yazumuto Mo, I think it says Nori. Perfect pace for the perfect project. And I'll put a link in the description box. And it's from Amazon. And it's it's like a, a, a glue stick in a pot. And it's quite, it's, it's quite, I quite like the smell of it and it's it's really yeah really tacky and what you can do is you can add some water to um uh to thin it out and um it'll go much further but I I'm not going to here I'm just going to use it as it is but it's it's a really nice and what I really really like about this is that it's great for collage because you can use it like a glue stick and and glue the bottom of the paper and then you can um glue over the paper just like you would with a matte medium gel 
and uh, it, it, it dries completely clear. And that's what I've been using for my collage. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with this product. Um, it's a bit of an outlay, but nothing compared to matte medium or or buying a ton of um, glue sticks. So I'm going to I'm going to use this and see how it goes. I'll um, just make sure I'm getting that in the right position. Because what I want to do is just tuck under there. And I'll just rip this a little bit. Okay. There is a fair bit of drying time with this product um, and when you, once it's pretty dry, um, so if you're doing something like, um, I've got here some master boards, they're rather large, but uh, like this now, um, what you'd need to do is then put it under some heavy books to flatten it out because you do get the, the bend in it. But other than that, it's, it's, it's a really versatile product and it truly does dry uh, clear. OK, so I'm going to have to be careful with that there. And make sure I don't get that too wet now, but I'm not too bothered because once that glues in place well, what i might do is i might put a bit of glue on it once it sticks in place it should be fine and i can always add just a tiny little bit of extra paper to it if i need to so i'm gonna see how that goes without it for now okay what i've got next okay so we gotta put these on first And I, I'm really quite pleased with the colour. So I'm going to use this as well to glue this on. Right, that looks okay to me. Still got plenty of journaling space around there. What I'd like to do next is do a couple of splatters around the page, um, just to uh, just to tie in with the elements that Rachel has put in here, and this sort of beautiful sort of watercolory effect of the um, of the image. So I'm going to just grab one of the colours I used yesterday, which was uh, the darker blue. And I'm just going to do some splatters. Oops, going absolutely everywhere. I'm going to dry that off. You can see a really different effect on the paper between where I've got 
gesso as the substrate and then I've flicked some watercolour paint on compared to just this piece of tea dyed paper. So you can see the, re the real difference between there. So this, this does really strengthen your paper when you're doing mixed media. So it's worth the effort of putting a couple of layers on, drying them off and having them there. And um, when you come to journal on it, uh, any type of gel pen works perfectly on gesso, even a fountain pen. So um, there's no issues whatsoever with, uh, with writing over gesso. Okay, the only thing I've got left now really to do is to add a little bit of um, decorative elements and I don't want to overpower the page because th t this is this is the main the main image for me what I've got is a really simple cluster here and literally it's a piece of book cloth old book cloth one piece of music paper and then a piece of um, fabric which um, I got from Boho Needs. I think that's what the shop is called. I will link it down below. But what I liked about this little cluster is I think it goes really well with the page. And I've just done a little bit of a zigzag stitch there. And when I do my clusters, all I do is I just get some scrappy bits lay them on top of one another different ways just to see what works what sizes and generally that's how i would make a cluster maybe probably something like that and i'd sew that and then leave it until i've got a suitable journal to use it in and then whatever theme or style or color i'm using so if i was going to do my truly blue I'd probably add something like that and then just something in the middle. So that, that is how I do my clusters. What I'm thinking with this is because there are some really nice reddish pinks, some oranges in here, there's some purples in here. So there are some warm colours as well as the quite uh, cool grey and um, blue tones. So I was thinking of just simply adding a, if I do it that way, of adding a stamp because I don't want to add a flower because this is so pretty anyway. So I don't need to really add a focal point on the cluster. But I was just thinking of doing something like that. And I got these, uh, I got this stamp and I've got a few here, which I'm hoping to use in the journal a bit more because I keep on forgetting I've got them. And they're perfect colours from Simply Postage Stamps. And I will definitely link her Etsy shop below because the shop is amazing it's got every different color stamp you can possibly want so whatever color theme you've got or style you've got going on in your journals you'll be able to find some stamps that match so um yeah that, that's that was a brilliant find there so that's what i'm thinking of doing is let me just move this out the way it's just putting that on there and then I don't think it detracts too much from the image and it's pretty and it goes everything. So I'm going to use a glue gun for that, uh, which is what I tend to use when I know I'm not going to sew into the book. Actually, I don't need that there. I can take that off. Um... I think I'll go just for there, like that. You always get a good uh, stick with um, with a glue gun. It's just you can't sew it afterwards, and you've got to be really quick when you use it. But it is great for clusters. Um, because you, you know that it's going to be safe on the page. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... I don't want that loose. And I just want to put that stamp there. And tuck it in underneath. And then... Put 
glue that. It's not straight. Grits down. There's nothing much I can do about it now. And I am going to also just add a little bit of um, Distress Oxide, Vintage Photo. I just want to bring some elements of the tea stain paper here. And there we have it. There's my spread for for this. And uh, I don't think it needs anything else. Um, I'm going to look forward to writing all over this. And uh, just have a quick flick through to see what else I've done in this book and what needs finishing. And then I'll uh, probably do another video then on, on finishing off some of the layers. So I've put a postcard in there. Um, which oh, I just love that postcard and um, we made this tag in an earlier video so I need to do something here definitely and I'll probably find some kind of cluster to work on there so I got a side cluster and uh, I was suggesting here that I was going to do a, a tag tab tab tag <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave this page blank or if I put something on that side I'll probably put a uh, a cluster on there as well as from the back here i am going to gesso over this and let it dry just so i've got it got a nice base there um and if i got i've got this card to go in here this needs finishing though and sewing um so what i've done here is i've used a piece um of masterboard just like this one and I've added some of the digital kit, some of the Nana Rose's digital kit. Then I've just got a, one of Rachel's, um, I think that's from the Ertaili Ert kit, the family, the family kit. And I've just backed it onto some music paper and stuck it down and then added um, some fabric there. But I need to sew and I'd like to put a quote on that. So that's not quite finished. So I'll do that on camera as well. Um, but I'd still like to be able to do some journaling on there if I want to. So I want to definitely gesso that. I've made a bit of a mess on there. So I will probably cover that with a little bit of fabric. So I may just do that now. Yep. That's going to go on there. It fits perfectly. That's that done. And so this is the page we've just done. This page, um, I might actually leave that like that now because it just looks really nice there. Uh, but I definitely need to do something like a tab on this page or maybe a pocket. We'll have an idea on that. This is a very blank page, so I'm definitely going to be adding some of the kit on here I haven't actually done much in this signature and this was the one I did off camera which was a bit of a test for uh, doing this one as you can see it's quite plain and what I'll probably do is another kind of cluster on the side here that brings in the blues and the pinks to make it uh, just all blending together and this page i'll probably do some gesso on it i will add some of the digital kit quite liking that as it is very plain here so i can probably put a pocket and tag there that's what my note says and then on the back of this and on the back of all the other um signature covers i'm gonna be using some vellum and do some tags on there so i've still got quite a bit to do um and on the front here um again i've got a simple cluster a piece of music paper a piece of um you know the ribbon you can buy on a roll that's a piece of bedding another piece of bedding and then um a bull not a bulldog clip uh i think they're called bull ring clips um and just a nice um decorative element there 
and then I've just stuck that down. I've got the date of um, when I'm going to be starting this signature. So I'm doing this one in advance, but I do have all the other ones to finish um, and I'm halfway through them. So um, probably in my next video, I'll, I'll run through what I've done so far because I actually I'm having to use the journals as I'm as I'm making them. And I'll show you what I've done and how I need to finish them off. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, t little mixed media tutorial. Um, if you did like the video, please um consider liking and commenting and subscribing to my channel for um, further fun and frolics with um, just journaling and that's that's my love so thanks for joining me and see you soon